The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks, or good afternoon, depending on what time you're listening to the show. This is uh, Steve Rhodes. This is the magical Monday, December 23rd edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm uh, recording it live between 8 and 9, so if you're listening at 1 o'clock, try to make this as pertinent for you as I can. Uh, right now, we've got uh, all of the uh, futures contract, U.S. equity futures contracts are trading to the upside. Uh, look, this hour, it's all about you. So I'd love to hear from you if you're up early and listening in, 877-927-6648. That's one way to get in touch with us. See us another way. If you uh, can't call in, you can always send me an email. But do it early, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started. The uh, It's going to be a very light trading week, obviously. Um, uh, market hours uh, tomorrow, you get the market closing at 1, opening back up on uh, Thursday and Friday, but going to be light trading out here. Uh, so uh, let's go get started on this uh, magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Trying not to sneeze here in your, uh, in your uh, ear. That would be... <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. In any event, let's go take a look at the markets right now. As you can see, you got the, the equity futures trading the upside. Dow was up 58 points. S&P up about six. Uh, NASDAQ 123. Russell up two points out there. Overseas last night in Asia, markets were mixed. You had the Shanghai off about 1.5%, 44 points. To the downside, the Hang Seng up 35. That was a little over one-tenth of a percent. Flat market in uh, Japan, the Nikkei up four points. Uh, the Australian 200 down 31, or about a half a percent. And the DAX right now is trading off 10, while the FTSE is up 39 points. You've got gold up 4 bucks, silver up 13 pennies. Light sweet crude is uh, flat. Uh, natural gas down 11 cents gap to the downside, off about 5% uh, right now. T-bonds are up 4 ticks, the 30-year, that is, the 10-year, is uh, flat as we uh, speak. U.S. dollar index trading up about eight pennies. Okay, so no questions in the uh, queue just yet. Uh, we've got Jay, who's got the uh, grits ready to uh, roll and a little uh, fish. Um, and uh, had some fish tacos last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, Jay, still eating some of that uh, fine product that I caught last Sunday out there. But let's go take a look at the markets out here. I know one of Jay's questions would be, hey, are there any new profiles? So let's begin there and take a look at those. Here are our four daily equity futures contracts. And we can see the blue lines out here are the daily TAS market profiles. And uh, no, nothing has uh, formed out here. So what are these profiles used for? Uh, they help us as uh, guardrails, in essence, to identify uh, support and resistance when you're not posting. Well, Jay, thank you for that. Uh, let's get the uh, guys in the uh, den. They're here early. They uh, have not apparently posted my chart. So, um, uh, guys in the uh, studio, please, please, please get those up. Uh, and then we'll go to, as soon as you get that uh, going, then we can go to Isaac in New York. But I don't want to, you know, if I can't answer Isaac's questions by showing him what's going on, that's not going to uh, help. But we do have a caller who's calling in about uh, gold and silver. Let's uh, let's go to him. Let's go to Isaac. Uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hi, I'm fine. Good morning, Steve. Uh, Good morning. My question to you is like this. I see you have on your, um, on your newsletter, you have that silver is a TD um, 8 count today. I don't know what the little asterisk is next to it. But my question is twofold. Both gold and silver have had the last 10, 12 days a very, very tight and small range. Does that play a role in, in, in when you calculate a TD9 count, that it's really it's easy for it to, to actually start moving up and it wouldn't be valid because it's such a small range or it doesn't make a difference? So the the answer to your question is no. The TD9 count is the is just simply taking a look at uh, each bar's close and comparing that to the uh, prior bar to the to the close of the bar four bars earlier. So again, let me state that. So in this case here, are you watching us on Tiger TV? I think we've got everything posted now. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. So uh, if we, this is the daily time frame chart that we're taking a look at. And uh, December 12th was bar number one. And the reason that it was bar number one is that close was a close above the bar four bars earlier. So we just count four bars earlier. One, two, three, four. We can see that the fourth bar was December 6th. And that's when price was pushing lower, closed lower. And so therefore it gets a uh, bar of uh, count of one. On that second day, small bodied candle, as you said, but still that close was above the bar four bars earlier. And so it's just simply a method of being able to say, hey, do we have, does the market, is the market generating successive closes where that close is above the close four bars earlier? Today looks like it will be bar number eight out there. Um, I think you might have been looking at, was, was it the weekly chart? I think it's the weekly chart that is, give me a second here to pull that up for you. Let me pull this over because I think what you're referring to with regard to silver, I'm not sure, but let me just pull it up and make sure out here. And so what Isaac's talking about are these, uh, this is not the, this, I grabbed the wrong one, sorry. This is actually for the uh, cash indices out there, but let me pull over the one that's got the uh, futures contract. And this is, folks, this is my one of my market analyzers. That way, uh, subscribers like Isaac understand uh, what is going on inside the market uh, as soon as I can. Uh, so I think what you're referring to over here, so the stars. So let's take a look at the uh, stars. What do the stars mean out here? And right now, I'm just looking at the equity futures contracts out here. The stars are a way of telling us that the uh, nine count or the eight count, whether it's the upside or the downside, uh, is a valid count. And what I mean, what I mean by valid count, Isaac, is I mean that the high of this pattern is either on bars eight, bar nine, or the bar following nine. So in the case of the NQ, as an example, it right now on a weekly basis shows bar number one. Uh, that's and you've got a star next to it, so that's telling us that that is actually bar number ten that has made the high. And the star is telling us that the pattern itself is uh, valid out there. So, with regard to the stars, does that help you? With regard to yeah, the small body candles, it explains what, what the stars are. But the question is, it doesn't bother you the fact that the ranges have been so narrow. Let's say, for example, in silver. <clears throat> Well, it's not just silver that the ranges are narrow, um, but does a narrow range, well, you're asking the question, so kind of give me a feel for your perspective and where you're coming from. It sounds okay, to me like- so Silver like, normally trades, let's say, in a 30 cent range between the high and the low every single day. And let's say the last week, it's just been ranging, let's say, seven or eight cents. So the fact that we've gone up and, and the, the actual net change in the whole let's say nine bars or let's say 12 cents, does that, should that, might that play a role in the fact that even though it's hitting a nine count, it doesn't, it'll, it'll gives us less of a reason to expect, to suspect that the market is making a short term top. Um, the, I guess I, I don't have, I don't have any experience that I can share with you that says that small bodied candles um, are going to have any meaning with regard to the the pattern? Um, you know, here is here is the silver futures contract. This is using my synthetic version. We're about to go to a hard break, so what I want to do is be able to come back to this set of charts out here. Um, but to answer your question, small-bodied candles don't bother me. But uh, let's come back and uh, discuss silver with Isaac and anything else, Isaac, that you'd like as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. 8.18 in the morning, recording the show uh, live this morning between 8 and 9. Thanks for listening. And we're on the line with Isaac in New York. So, Isaac, um, are you looking to go short silver or are I'm you long? I'm looking to buy. I'm actually looking to buy. But I'm okay. curious as to because I know that the TD9 count is going to have a sell signal. So I'm concerned about it. I know that we're coming into an illiquid period in the market. But I'm just, you know, so I'm taking that into account. So I'm definitely going to put on a smaller position. And I'm worried, I'm concerned about the TD9 line count. And, it, and is your, your, you want to purchase silver, is this for a, a longer term type holding or? No, it's ever? actually quite a short term. Short term, with okay. With the holidays coming up, I'm not sure, you know, at all whether I should take it or not. And that's what I'm concerned. Yeah, so holiday trading is definitely, um, is definitely, uh, because of the lack of liquidity, as you pointed out in the market, is always a bit of a tricky situation. First, let me just give you the bigger picture on, on silver here, even though you, you did mention short term. But as long as I've got the monthly time frame chart up on the screen, one of the other benefits of that TD9 count, Isaac, is that it provides us with a breakout and a breakdown area. Um, that is uh, the high or low of that nine count. So when we take a look at a monthly time frame chart on our screen, we can see that both at 1840 and at 1957, but right now at 1840, that's a significant resistance level uh, for silver. So e e on any move higher, you must be aware that that 1840 has acted as a, a nice resistance level out there. And then until silver were to close above that, would there be any kind of a potential breakout on a longer term basis? So silver has not broken out uh, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I believe that silver will go ahead and follow the price of gold and that you will see both gold and silver lower uh, coming in to the uh, following year, but that's because of the patterns that are out there inside of gold. If I look at the weekly time frame chart here for silver, you can see that it formed a nice road momentum indicator bottom back in November, but when it did top out here, and twice it did this, it created at its highs these TD9 count patterns. Now, this is the weekly time frame chart out here, and so the first high that I'm looking at was back in February of this year that led to a move lower right into support. So remember, when we take a look at those TD9 counts, they help us to identify breakout support. Those would be the red lines on my screen 
screen and then break down resistance. Those would be the green line. So closing above a green line here, as silver did back on July, the week of July 26 out there, suggested that silver would continue to run higher. To where? Well, 1752, that was its next breakdown area. Price gets above that and it doesn't top until it creates that TD, that ninth bar, that TD nine count out there. It creates a nice little shooting star. Price on the weekly basis below Stevie's green line, which is 1750. Uh, this would say that any counter trend rally uh, could or should stop at that 1750 level out there. Now, if we go take a look at the daily time frame, so we start to get back towards some shorter term time frames out here. Today would definitely not be the day, or tomorrow would definitely not be the day, and Wednesday, uh, it would be Thursday now, would definitely not be the day to take a long trade in the silver. The reason is, so if we take a look at silver on the daily time frame, what you'll notice is that when it did top, it was on bar number eight of the TD9 count. So this is on the trading day of September 4th. Price does what? Moves lower into the support level of the breakout area, 1724. Finally breaks below and closes below for a second time on November the 8th out there. So closing below support or closing above resistance two times in a row suggests to me that the breakout or breakdown move is in fact real out here. And silver starts to stretch itself and move lower on December the uh, 6th and December the 9th out there. Never making a bullish reversal pattern. That's with road the road's momentum indicator aspect Back. That's really one of the key levels. Now, the reason I said that you would not want to enter into a long trade on silver today is because today on the daily basis is going to be bar number eight. Uh, and that is at a and so bar number eight can be a top, uh, Isaac, just as it was a, a top back on September the uh, 4th out there. It could also be bar number nine or bar number the bar following nine, bar number 10. That's why I said for the next three days, I think silver is off limits unless we were to see some type of breakout that's going on. So trading above, let's say on the daily basis, uh, the TD nine count green line out there, which is not what we have. So I would rather see you uh, uh, buying uh, silver if it had a TD9 count to the downside um, or some other pattern or a test of support, the breakout support, but it doesn't. And therefore, I, I don't think it's a, it's a wise trade to go long silver. Now, if you're going to get to some really short-term time frames out here, and this chart, by the way, that's on my screen, you've got a 60-minute and a 240-minute. So on the 60-minute, price is below the bottom of the uh, profile out there. Let me, uh, give me a second here to punch up silver on my short-term. Can you bring up a 15-minute chart? Ah, for you, I can bring up anything. So let's just go here. We'll take this 30-minute time frame chart. Let me switch this to a 15-minute time frame chart. My oscillator and change line, the little green or red line, is squiggly now. And the reason that it's squiggly is because it's still set to a 30-minute time frame. So let's not pay attention to that. But on the 30, on the 15-minute time frame, this shows that price has moved all the way back earlier uh, during this 15-minute cycle, has gotten back to a key level of support. That's at $17.30. So that 1730 was set up by the low of the most recent TD setup nine count to the upside. So what price has done so far this morning on a very short term basis is pulled back to support. Now, it didn't get right down to support at 1730. The actual low so far this morning, uh, this is the um, March contract out here for silver. The low there is 1732 versus 1730. Now, I don't know if price is going to get back down there. You've got a bullish reversal candle. It looks to me like, okay, that little short term low from a 15 minute basis is in. And now, what I'd be looking for, let me change the uh, oscillator and change line just so we're looking at an accurate uh, depiction of what's going on here. Let me change this to 15 minutes. It'll take just a second to do that uh, because that's going to be potentially your first level of resistance. If you are long, let's say you took the long trade right now, what you're looking for, your resistance areas are going to be 1737, 1739, and 1741. If price can close above those areas and where price should get to, it would be 1746. That is the high of the most recent TD setup nine count to the downside. What question next? Okay, for you? no, that pretty much uh, sums it up and it, it gives me everything that I needed. So, oh, perfect. Thank you very well, much. Well, when I can do that, that's a good thing. So uh, thanks for calling in and uh, glad yeah, we could give you what you were looking for. You got it. Thank you. Bye. You bet. Have a great day. That was Isaac in uh, New York. Uh, support. Uh, but now, now, silver, here's the other side of it. Here's the daily time frame. You can see price above the daily profile. So if uh, so, forget about the short term. Not that I'm going to ask you to forget about the short term, but if price could break above that break.
down level in the 15-minute uh, time frame chart that would then say, okay, well, maybe silver's going to move up to in the 1766-ish type area. That's the center of its bearish structured weekly profile out there. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're just about to go to another break. Of course, I'm recording this show live between 8 and 9 in the morning. It's 826 out there. Currently, we've got all the equity futures. They're trading to the upside. Dow equity futures up 58. S&P up 6.5. NASDAQ up 24. Russell 2000 up a couple of points. Uh, spot volatility X, by the way. At least it was before. Let's go check in on it. It is also trading higher. It's up by seven pennies right now, trading out at 12.58 out there. And that's the danger sign right now in the marketplace. There's several of them. But uh, one of those danger signs is this pattern, which is a rising spot volatility index on a closing basis. That's the bottom panel and rising price in the S&P 500. And that just says caution. Will Robinson. Well, and all of us. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now is a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. A quick uh, review of what we just uh, looked at uh, during that last segment out here. So we're taking a look at silver. Isaac was looking at silver. We take a look at the daily time frame chart out here. We can see that uh, silver is going to form or should form bar number eight of a TD setup nine count today. The last time that silver formed a high was on bar number eight. That was back on September 4th. And uh, my suggestion to Isaac was this is not the day 
nor would it be tomorrow, nor would it be on Thursday to enter a long trade into silver with that potential topping signal in place. However, Isaac was a shorter term type trader. And so what we did was we took a look at the parameters he requested, which was for a 15 minute time frame to assist him. And here, what we've got is support and resistance, support being 1730, that's a TD9 count breakdown, resistance being 1746 out there. Uh, and so that was the review. We've got a request to go take a look at an individual equity. That individual equity is ticker symbol ICLN. Let's, uh, this is from Mike H. Mike writes in and says, uh, could you please review ICLN for an entry point if you think it's a long candidate? Think intermediate to long-term uh, perspective. So um, here's what we know. So now is not the time to also enter into a long trade for uh, the S&P Global Clean Energy Index Fund. The reason is because, well, Friday was bar number eight. Today may be bar number nine. We won't know until the close. Today's close must be above the close of bar number five out there. Bar number five. Uh, by the way, that close is, uh, for you to be watching, is 11.58 today. And the reason is because you can form one of those TD set up nine counts. Now, I wouldn't be shorting this equity as a result of uh, that as we speak, but uh, now is not your entry point. Of course, you were asking for an entry point. The question is, do you know, does this form a TD set up nine count top? And if it does, then where is price going to pull back to? And we'll want to take a look at the profiles at that stage right now. There's a bullish, uh, bullish structure daily profile. 11.46 would be an entry point, or 11.51 would be a potential entry point and a pullback. But then if it's a top, that, those areas are likely to fail, not guaranteed to fail. Um, and it's not much above where it's trading right now, so why not enter it now? Because we really need to see what happens if this does form some type of top, and how do these key levels of support hold? Because price could pull all the way back to where it had uh, broken out, which was at 10.97. Uh, that was its previous resistance level. So for iClean, now you had also mentioned intermediate term. So if we're going to take a look at intermediate term on this or long term on the weekly chart, well, first we can see prices above uh, the weekly and the monthly profile. So everything is looking good there. And on the weekly time frame, all we can see is prices moving higher, doing less relative energy. Uh, that itself is not a reason to take a, a short trade, just as a cautionary type signal out there. Um, as far as uh, the weekly chart, I'm just trying to figure out where the wave counts, where we might be. Letter number F, that's going to be wave number six. That was last week out there. Um, I think you just have to respect the daily time frame out here, Michael, and wait to see if this does, in fact, top, and then we'll see how it's pulling back with volume, without volume, and so on and so forth out there. So uh, thanks so much for uh, writing in, and uh, happy holidays to you. Let's go to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, uh, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good morning, Steve. Can you hear me okay? Can I hear you just, just fine, sleepy eyes? <laughs> how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Did you have a nice weekend? I did. It was very good. How about you? Excellent. Yeah, uh, you know, we got some uh, nasty weather kind of uh, flowing through the area, so it's not your ideal Florida weather, but I think we'll have it in a couple hours, so that'll work. I can wait. That's good. <laughs> I had a question about the overall markets and your uh, seasonal work uh, specifically. Yes. And my question was, if I'm understanding correctly from what you've been saying, oh, so here recently that if we were to make it to the end of the year, continue with this uptrend, I know you're cautious. You know, I know you're looking at yeah. things that give you caution, but if that were to transpire as opposed to us having some kind of big correction before we get there, that would be more bullish going into next year. Is that correct? So could you re restate that last? Uh, that last. Oh, uh, uh, just if it's if we don't have some kind of big correction between now and the end of the year, it's going to be more bullish for the market in 2020. No, I, is that correct? No, that's not my take. Oh, okay. So, so part of my take would be. So let me just see if I can find if this will open up for me. I hope that it will. Um, and I want to just punch up the seasonal pattern out here. Um, uh, there we go. Give me uh, just give me a second here. I should be able to do this here. Let's see slideshow from the current slide. So, folks, what what Brent is referring to here is the annual seasonal cycle, 
And so what we do know is right now the markets are moving higher on a seasonal basis. This is over. This is a study over the last uh, eight, uh, 86 years out here. The Dow will typically form some type of top in early January. Now, the day is in this cycle over the last 84 years. The average has been January 6, but it doesn't have to happen on January 6. It could be January third or it could be January 15th or it could be so sometime in January we would expect some type of, of seasonal top which would then pull us down into the uh, 30th that would be the normal thing with so many topping signals that are out there Brent my concern is and I don't know what the magnitude it, let's say a top does form um, or at least a short-term top does form. Then the question becomes what's happening on the longer term chart so the how do I get the weekly chart, monthly chart out here for you? I know one way to do it. So let me take a look at the S&P 500 as an example. So this is going to take just a moment to uh, to, to get to pull up as well. But uh, so here's the monthly time frame chart for the S&P. I need to make one change to this chart because price is still moving higher, doing less relative energy. But I've got this set so that it doesn't pick up that signal until the bar no, I don't have it on the bar close. Well, that's interesting. That's, that's really interesting out here. Um, on my other charts for the long term, must be the futures contracts that are showing. Well, let me pull up the Dow. Well, we, actually, I should stay with the Dow anyways because we're taking a look at the seasonal pattern with the Dow. So give me a moment here to do that. So up will come the Dow. And so what we've got going on here, Brent, is... December so far is a relatively small bodied candle for the for the Dow out here and price is moving higher doing less relative energy and so let's say we get some type of pullback in January the question is going to be uh, what is the what's the bar look like on a monthly basis as we come into that end of the month area and is price trading below Stevie's green line which right now as a Friday's close this is a monthly chart was 27907 so because the the bar is small the body of the candle is small it makes it easier to form some type of bearish reversal candle so if we do get a bearish reversal candle and we do get a close below Stevie's green line out there that could be a suggestion that there's a larger retracement that would be underway. Is that okay. kind of, does yeah. that make, and then when I take a look at the weekly time frame chart here for the Dow, uh, the Dow is forming on a weekly basis. A last week was bar number nine of a TD nine count. We know that this week could be a higher high that could then set up that potential top. So we want to watch the weekly as well. So the weekly's got a potential TD nine count top. The monthly's got a potential roads momentum indicator top. And then we get back from this break. Let's go look at the daily time frame chart for the Dow and see what we see. Okay. That sounds good. Thanks. Steve. Perfect. Perfect. You bet. We'll be back with Brett in Martinez, California in just a few minutes. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. 8.42 in the morning. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California, and we're discussing the Dow, the seasonal patterns. Uh, the seasonal pattern, typically the Dow will form some type of top uh, in the early first week of uh, January, and then the markets move lower into the end of January. Now, the uh, concern, and I was certainly more concerned last week on Thursday because of all the signals that were out there. Uh, Friday's move higher negated a number of the daily signals. It did not, daily roads momentum indicator signals, it did not do that in the Dow, and the Dow is what we're really referring to. Now, the reason why these roads momentum indicator signals are so important, and folks, you, it's a five step process. So my lines start to begin drawn, and we're looking just simply at a bar chart right now. And uh, as we take a look at uh, the bar chart, this, it just allows me to show you a little bit more data. So going back into September of 2018, you can see that the roads momentum indicator signal identified a nice top out here back in the early part of October of 2018, then a nice bottom into October 29th that led to a, a nice little rally. We've got a top that formed out here in April that led to a, a bottom that formed in June, a top that formed out here in July, a bottom that formed with these signals in August. And now we have a, a topping signal in place here for the uh, Dow. So with regard to the Dow, everything is in. So if price continues to move higher with less relative energy out there on a daily basis, you'll have a topping signal. We've got the TD nine count pattern on the weekly and on the monthly. The bar is so small that it should be easy to create a bearish reversal candle. On the month is not over. It's only the 23rd out there. But we shouldn't see substantial moves to the upside typically during the holiday um, period out here, Brent. So I don't think the markets are going to get wildly um, ahead of us with regard to the Dow itself um, you know here are it's a weekly and it's monthly horizontal trading ranges let me see if I can add the uh, daily here real quickly just to look at the next possible area of uh, support uh, did that do it no that didn't do it uh, let's see if this does it here if this gets me the uh, daily out here so actually, you know, the Dow equity futures contract is, is really above resistance and price could run up in the 29 ish area. But am I confusing you? Because I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> my, I'm a little, no, it's just slightly. I mean, I kind of get yeah. what you're saying. It's going to depend on what the, how the charts develop over this period of time. But I guess, I, yeah, I'm going to go back and look at the archive. And, you know, but, but continue. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. No, it's, 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 it's just that there are, there, there, there are so many weekly potential topping signals, monthly potential topping signals, a daily moving up into a period of time where we should see some kind of a top has me a bit more cautious, but I don't know what the candle formation is going to be, right? And so we're just simply going to have to come back to that. But those candle formations could 
on the longer term chart really set up uh, something that could lead to a, a market that moves lower beyond okay, yeah, kinda, beyond yeah, beyond the typical be cycle day. More of, bearish. What's that? Oh, you seem like you might be a little more bearish potentially, just depending on how it how it pans out here. Yeah. I, 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 it's because of all those patterns that are present at the, mo at the moment. And then taking a look at those patterns and saying, okay, how difficult would it be to create a bearish reversal candle on the monthly time frame chart uh, for, the, for the Dow? And when I take a look at it, the answer is not, not difficult at all because the actual body of the candle, uh, let me just put that monthly chart back out here, just isn't that wide. It's, um, you know, and I was talking to a, uh, to a subscriber earlier this morning. We were looking at silver, and he was referring to small-bodied candles. Uh, what a small-bodied candle, in essence, does is, in this case here with price moving higher, it just makes it easier to create that bearish reversal candle should it form. So, yeah, I'm a little bit more cautious uh, that the markets are actually overstretched and setting up because everybody is looking for the other side, is looking for the bullish side out there. And I'm just saying not so fast based upon the pattern signals and what it would actually take to get the Dow to say, hey, I want another nice pullback here. Yeah, that part I do fully understand. I mean, that, that you've explained, you know, in a way that I definitely get it. So okay, um, I appreciate it very much, Steve. Just have a Merry Christmas and enjoy the holidays there. So I'll you, talk to you after the Christmas and going into the new year here. You bet. You too. And thanks so much for being up early uh, and uh, and calling us. That's 547 in the morning, uh, folks. That is the early bird that catches the worm out here. Let's see what's going on here in the uh, pre-market. See what we can see. Looks like uh, ITCI, that's intracellular therapy, is closed at, uh, well, that closed at 12.44 on uh, Friday. Right now, that's trading out at 24, so that's a double out there. Um, so that's a nice move. You've got Sarepta Therapeutics. SRPT is the uh, ticker, ticker symbol. Close at 126. This is now trading out at 137, but just trading with inside its uh, daily profiles out here. Close above 138.79 would be nice and bullish for it. Tesla, which closed at 405, is trading at 413 out here. So it is extending its gains. The high on Friday was 413 even. You're trading at 412.70, the last trade that fired off out there so that's what's going on to the upside to the downside uh just to get ung so i think here i believe i've got a question that has come in about ung let me go back to that and see that is uh clinton and clinton what's uh, what's your line on unh not ung so uh, let's go take a look and he's referring to uh, stevie's red or green line that's the oscillator unchanged line and so when we take a look at unh that is united health uh united health uh it, price is trading below our close below it looks like on friday was this friday's candle uh, yeah, it was. Close below Stevie's green line. That was 293.67. So this would suggest that as long as price stays below 293.67, that's Stevie's green line, that price would pull back to the next level of support, Clinton. And that level would right now have to be the top of the daily profile. It would be 283. You asked about Nike. NKE is the ticker symbol. So let's punch that up on our screen. And what Nike did on Friday was Nike pulled back to test Stevie's green line that was 99.23 out there. And so this remains in bullish configuration. You did have a bear candle that uh, formed on uh, Friday. Uh, there is an A to B equals CD. It's a small one, but it looks like this. Uh, let's draw it in. And this is coming off the low from November 6th. That's your A point, your B point, November 19th, your C point, this little hammer candle down on December 3rd. So this made a 1 to 1.618, A to B equals CD. Did that with a confirmed bearish reversal candle. So in the case of Nike, if you were to see a follow through to the downside of that bearish reversal candle, but more importantly, a close blow 99.23, that would then signal to us that Nike is getting ready to pull back to the 94.68 level out there. So Clinton, that's what I would be looking at for those two specific instruments hope that information uh, helps you out so as we go into this uh, break here before it looks like we would get to the two minute wrap let's take a look at the equity futures again they are trading to the upside the dow is up 55 points that's the dow equity futures contract the futures contract for the es mini is up about seven the nasdaq up 28 the russell up a couple the es mini right now dealing with an area of uh, resistance that resistance being 
its horizontal trading ranges. The uh, daily and the weekly are about the same level. This is the ES Mini Equity Futures contract. This is the continuous contract. 3242 is a resistance level. 3262 is the monthly horizontal trading range boundary line. That's probably it for the rest of the year, that 3262 area uh, out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed. And I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, you know, during that last segment or so, we were talking with Brent about the Dow, just the markets in general out here. So as we take a look right now, you've got the S&P futures up by six uh, points, a little over six points out there. Spot volatility index is up six pennies out there. So not a big deal, except it is a big deal. Again, Brent, when we come back and everybody else out there, will we pay attention to the fact that right now, a little subtle pattern out here, a little subtle, subtle pattern that you and I have seen before. We know that uh, these patterns, when they do confirm, and by confirm, we need to see some type of bearish reversal candle out here for the S&P 500. So the top panel of our chart is the S&P cash, and the bottom panel of our chart is spot fix. Uh, the yellow line out there is a 50-day exponential moving average. But what's really important is December 16th, and the closing, uh, the closing price of the spot volatility at, at that stage was 1214. Right now, the spot VIX is trading out at 1257. So we've had the S&P 500 moving higher. 
at the same time that the uh, closing price of the spot volatility index has also been moving higher. Now, this pattern can be negated by the spot volatility index closing uh, below 1214. But we don't have that pattern right now. What and, and marked on my chart out here are other similar type patterns that it <clears throat> have led to uh, either market uh, retracements or market uh, deep enough market uh, corrections out there. So it's one of those other patterns, very subtle, not too many people, very few people that I know of uh, follow this specific pattern. I know that listeners out there do because we uh, we know how important it is to pay attention to it. So that's what I see in the overall markets. With regard to this morning out here, it's 8.56 in the morning. If we take a look at the 30-minute chart here for the Dow Equity Futures contract, it formed a TD setup nine count top for the short term. Price right now is testing Stevie's green line. It's right around 26.529. If price is able to close below that, expect the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract to pull back to 28,480, 28,486, or 28,497. Those would be its downside targets. If it can hold that, it's just nothing more than a normal retracement. Folks, have a Merry Christmas, have a safe and happy holiday, and I'll look forward to seeing you on Thursday of this week. Take care.